A lot of ups and downs and visa updates have been introduced in the recent days. Some of them were good news and some of them were bad news. The most important update was about the new spouse visa requirement and there were a lot of changes that were done for the site. that, PPP colleges have also stopped giving admissions to students for September. In there was an important update regarding the allotment letters and also about numbers that were given to provinces they have started opposing the capping numbers that was given to there them. There was also another important update about students' unlimited working hours being taken back or IRCC is thinking that they might increase the hours. Lastly, we will also be discussing about disputes within colleges or disputes that they have with the other provinces. In case you have missed out on any recent update, I will be covering all these updates under 10 minutes video so that you do not have to go through every video separately to be updated about the latest changes in Canada study visa in 2024. So please make sure you watch the video till the end before. Before that, in case you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because on this channel, I keep on sharing such informative video from time to time. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Pawan Speaks Canada. I hope everybody is doing well. First update is about the new spouse visa requirement. So as per the latest update from the Immigration Minister, Mr. Mark Miller, international students who are doing undergraduate programs or postgraduate programs, especially the college students, the spouses of those students will no longer be given a spouse open work permit. And this will be banned very soon. So previously what was happening that there was no such ban on, on the same for college students who were doing undergraduate and graduate programs. And they were allowed to invite their spouses on a spouse open work permit. But now as the government thinks that this program was misused in the past, so they have made changes in this. As per the latest update and rule, in case your spouse is studying in a PPP college, either a public college or a private college, and the college is not eligible for the work permit. So in that case, you're not eligible or will be eligible of getting a spouse open work Post permit. the ban, only master courses are eligible for spouse open work permit and the funds requirements have also increased. And even in case you are doing a master's for one year, then you are still eligible for three years of work permit. And also, you can apply for your spouse along with your application. Let's talk about the next update, which was about PPP colleges. So the PPP colleges have also stopped giving admissions to students for September intake. So with this regard to admission in PPP colleges, the students are most of the time confused and have a lot of questions in their mind, especially about the work permit, such as in case they are going for any intake whether they will be getting work permit or not. I want to make one thing very clear in case you're going for May intake then you will surely that is 101 person will get work permit but in case you're going for September intake or that might be starting in August this is something which is very important because some of the PPP colleges are starting classes from August instead of September. So in that case, there is no problem, but I'm not too sure that you will get work permit or not. But in case IRCC consider August intake as a fall intake, then you might land up in a problem. And just because of that, only one of the PPP college called Mohawk College in Mississauga, which is actually a PPP college, they have canceled the September intake for international students. So PPP colleges have started closing and canceling admissions for international students. The next update is about attestation letters and also the numbers that were, province, were given to provinces. So, so these provinces have started opposing the capping numbers that were given to them. So a dispute has been started between colleges and universities because the capping has been introduced and the number of seats which were given to them were made limited. So previously, all the colleges and universities based on their capacities were able to give offer letters or were able to give admissions to students. But currently, all the provinces are being allotted with some quotas. 
So going ahead provinces will be giving the number of seats to colleges and universities. And because of this, the number of seats is now been limited for them. And because of that, the dispute has started even among colleges. I would like to showcase an example in which Salt College has blamed Constega College because of such that because of such colleges only the housing crisis has started in Canada because in 2023 they have given admissions to 30,000 students and because of that only a large number of international students have landed in Canada leading to the housing crisis but in reply to that Constega College have stated that they are a quality college and they have full capacity and they're giving full facilities to all the students and give quality education. And they have put a reverse blame on the Salt College, that Salt College has a lot of colleges which are PPP college category, and they are not been able to give quality education. So the dispute has already started between colleges and university, that was just an example. And soon we might see a lot of issues with regards to the number of seats among college. There was also another important update about students unlimited hours being taken back or IRCC may be thinking about increasing the number of working hours from 20 hours to more. So as per the update, the immigration minister has stated that the unlimited working hours right which were given to students will be taken back soon, post April 30th, 2024. But as there are a lot of small businesses which are dependent on these international students. So in case any changes will happen, it will have a major impact on these small businesses because these students are fulfilling their labor demands previously. Previously, students were getting used to get around 20 hours of working rights, but during the COVID times, as the businesses were struggling and more labor was needed at that time, and students were easily available, because of the business requirement and 20 hours capacity was removed and got changed to unlimited hours, which is currently valid up till 30th April 2024. So as per the update, whatever changes will be done will be done post 30th April only. There might be a possibility that this timeline might be extended and Canada is actually in favor of the same. And in case of any changes that happen, Two important things will play a major role. The first is inflation. Due to inflation in Canada, everybody is struggling to meet expenses and a reduction in hours will not be justified. And the second thing is small businesses will also get impacted because of shortage of labor in, in case the number of hours been reduced. So in the meeting, they have stated that post 30th of April, the student rights will be revised but they have put a lot of stress on the statement that in case number of hours is reduced from unlimited to 20 hours, it will not be 20 hours. It might be more than 20 hours of work as they will be considering inflation and small businesses which are running on basis of students. The next and the final update is about the capping being opposed by universities and colleges. Regarding this, especially universities have stated that whatever fingers which have been raised on them regarding the housing crisis and quality education, they are not accountable for the same. But now the cap in that has been introduced and they are kept under the same. And most of the universities are completely relying on fees from international students. And in case the number of international students are made limited, and universities will be given a quota for the student, then it will be a major loss to all the universities. And the same statement and the questions are also being raised by the public colleges. as well. So these were the recent updates that came in and in case you have missed them, I hope by watching this video now you are aware of them. So please make sure that you share this video to the maximum number of people so that they are also updated about the recent updates about Canada student visa. I hope this video will be of any help to you. In case you like the video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for all the latest information and updated information. And also please turn on the notification as well. Thank you for watching Pavan Speaks Canada. See you soon in my next video. Thank you and all the best.